Today, you guys, we're gonna be talking about Digicams, and I'm gonna be offering up some of my tips and tricks for you guys to get the best results, the best deals, and even share one of my personal secrets to achieving really nice looking, vintage looking photographs in just two simple steps. So be sure to stay till the very end. But this episode, you guys, is brought to you by Squarespace, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them later on in this episode and how they can elevate your photography to the next level with your own personalized website. But for now, let's get into the Digicam culture, kind of talk about the driving force force behind why these are becoming extremely popular and like we said in the beginning offer up my tips to get the best results let's go So last year we saw a huge emergence in a lot of photographers shooting these smaller digicams. I made a video called the $10 digicam that everyone should own and it kind of just blew up. This camera in particular blew up. And from that video what I learned was that I think a lot of people really like these smaller cameras because it's very low pressure and it's very fun to shoot. It's not like a Fuji camera that you feel like you need to baby around. It's not like a Leica or a, a big DSLR. These are just smaller, older, cheap digital cameras that give you a very nice vintage look at the very end. They often have on-camera flashes and so a lot of the images that you get from it kind of look like film, not 100%, but it does kind of provide you that very fun, open feeling shooting experience that you would get when you don't really want to take serious photos. So a lot of people nowadays are taking these along with them in their pockets as like an everyday carry camera. And they're capturing moments that they wouldn't otherwise capture with a camera through a digicam. And I think shooting with something like this that is small, pocketable, that you can bring anywhere is a lot different than shooting with your phone because your phone's camera is always accessible. Shooting with a dedicated photographic device, why did I say that? Shooting with a dedicated camera makes the experience a lot more tangible and ultimately makes photography more fun. And I think that's the driving force behind why these digicams are becoming more and more popular. But let's jump into some of my personal tips for how to shoot the digicam. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is choosing the right camera for you because there are tons and tons of digicams out there that have different features, also different price points, and you wanna be able to choose one that is gonna suit what you do best. So for example, these are all smaller kind of digicams right here, low megapixel count. Uh, I believe this one has 10. This one right here has 12.1 and this Nikon one right here, I don't even know how many megapixels it has, but it doesn't have a lot. I mean, <laughs> listen to that. It, it definitely does not have a lot of megapixels. Now, I would categorize these as your kind of more basic digicams. Look for the Canon ELF series cameras. The one that I have that I really, really love is the Canon ELF SD1000. It provides you this nice, boxy shape and it's about the size of a business card and you can slip this into any pocket into any bag when you're traveling man keep this thing in your pocket and you're gonna be able to make some amazing photographs just from this small device now in terms of where to find this you can find these cameras on eBay uh, you can find them at thrift stores you can even go into your garage or attic ask any of your friends and family if they have older digital cameras I guarantee you one of them will and whatever they have trust me it's good enough because this style of photography with shooting these smaller cameras is not to produce the highest quality image especially with the megapixel count on these cameras being extremely low it's really just to have fun with photography and to capture small moments here and there when you wouldn't otherwise with a digital camera now personally for me i love the boxy look and shape so a lot of my digicams here as you guys can see have that similar feature where they are nice and boxy then of course you guys they offer up a little bit more of a premium digicam um, these are the two that i personally really really like and these cameras typically have have a lot more features and maybe a little bit of a higher megapixel count so this one right here is the Canon S95 I love this one because it has this little ring which you can really set to control anything shutter speed aperture you can control your ISO you can you know use this for exposure compensation it really is a very versatile feature this camera is gonna be a little bit more expensive but it does have a ton of other features including an on-camera flash that pops up anytime that you want it to like this 
And then lastly, you have your more premium digicams, I guess you would say. And those things include like the Ricoh GR3, which is gonna be this bad boy right here. Um, and as you guys know, this has a really high price tag. This is like $900 for this small camera, but uh, it does have a ton of features that a lot of people really like, including a fixed 28 2.8 lens and just a ton of real pro features in a small camera body. So at the end of the day, you guys, it's up to you on you know how much you wanna spend. There are different cameras in each different price category level and so you can really really make some amazing images with any of those cameras but that is the first tip you guys choose the right camera for what you think you're gonna do with it now before I move on to tip number two I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode the good folks over at Squarespace Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, if you want to elevate your photography to the next level, one of the best ways to do that is with your own professionalized website. Now, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to build that professional website with award-winning templates you can use to get started within minutes. You can set up an e-commerce shop, a portfolio, and probably one of my newest favorite features, the video page, where you can display some new video content directly, uploading it on your website or linking it over from your YouTube channel. This is a especially helpful if you want to share some behind the scenes footage or if you are a videographer, you can even share your work directly on the website. So you guys get started today by heading over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. All right, you guys, tip number two, buy tons of extra battery. You know, I shoot these cameras all the time and especially if I'm going out with friends, I wanna have something small and compact the worst thing and the worst feeling is running out of battery and these cameras don't really have good battery life a lot of these are from like 2005 2003 you're gonna need to buy extras now luckily on Amazon on eBay uh, there are tons of third-party manufacturers that create batteries for these cameras that work just as well as the OEM product and so you can find these batteries super cheap and it's just an overall good idea to have a few spare batteries just in case your camera dies this is not sponsored Sponsored you guys but one of my personal favorites is wasabi i literally have tons and tons of batteries for all of my different digicams from this particular brand if you guys want to check it out i will leave some links in the description below tip number three you guys buy the right sd card now a lot of you guys know that sd cards have gone extremely cheap over the years and you can easily pick up a 128 gigabyte sd card for like $13. But folks, that is a huge problem for these digicams because these cameras were manufactured at a time where 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes were already a huge chunk of storage. A lot of these cameras won't support anything over a 16 gigabyte memory card. You know, look up online, you know, which SD card your camera needs, what the maximum capacity is, because a lot of them will not be able to read a huge SD card. And just to put it into perspective, you guys, this one right here, what card am I using? This is one gigabyte, <laughs> a one gigabyte SD card and it got me 455 images. Remember you guys, the files are tiny in this camera and so it's great if you wanna take a ton of photos but sometimes you won't be able to use a super big SD card. Tip number four is gonna be talking about getting the best colors and results from your camera. So first things first, what I do is I'll usually shoot this in whatever color profile is offered on the camera. Some of them offer like a positive film, but I will typically stay away from the weird wacky ones like sepia or just monochrome black and white. So I'll try to shoot it in the most flat profile possible or just the one that looks best. But the next tip here is to use a quick and free photo editing software. For example, something like VSCO. Now VSCO, has been around for years. I don't know if it's called Visco or VSCO. I don't know, correct me in the comments, but it's a great way to get your photos edited in a short amount of time. I mean, they offer a ton of different presets that you can use to get them to even look like film. And so if you play around with it, figure out what your favorite presets are, you can really create a workflow that works for you. And that's personally what I do with my Digicam photos. I'll import them on my computer, takes about maybe five minutes. I'll airdrop them over into my phone and then I will edit out all of the photographs. And a lot of times I can control the contrast, the exposure, I can even add grain, I can switch up the presets and just make it look completely different. You guys, the possibilities are endless. And if you wanna kinda of elevate your image from that base level all the way up to something that you think is great, you can use a photo editing software like Visco and get some insanely 
good results, you guys. And again, this is not sponsored by Visco. This is just what I personally do with my Digicam photos. And last but not least, you guys, tip number five is the one that I personally said to wait for because it is what really sets apart why these Digicams are special in my eyes. The last tip, you guys, is to utilize that flash to your advantage. Now, what do I mean by this, folks? When you shoot a Digicam, if you turn that flash on, and let's say you take a portrait of somebody in a dark location, the image that you get from the Digicam along with that flash combination in a dark place really makes your photograph look a lot like film. Mainly because it gives you that kind of film point and shoot look that you would see from like photographers who shoot backstage people, backstage celebrities for example, or artists or other photographers. And it's simple folks, turn that camera on, turn the flash on, and then just photograph two to three feet away. And you're gonna get some insane party looking images that are just going to last a lifetime, you guys. So that is probably one of my favorite things to do with these Digicams, to shoot with that flash on, and take pictures of my friends. That's just a lot of what I do with these things. And uh, it really provides some really great images. And people are gonna always want that photo. They're gonna be like, hey, can you send me that photo? That looks amazing. Post it up on Instagram. You get this nice vintage look. It looks like film. It's not super high def or high quality. So it looks like it's been shot on an old camera, which it was, and it is just amazing you guys it's definitely a party camera but folks that is my tips and tricks for digicams uh, let me know in the comment section down below how i did or if you guys want to add any more tips um, and suggestions for the other viewers that would be great but if you guys are brand new to this channel please drop a like down below and also hit that subscribe button we have a ton of more photography videos on the way including film photography of course because that is pretty much what i made this channel for but that's gonna wrap it up for me you guys i'll see you in the next one as always Minolta gang. Whew.